Okay, welcome everybody to the seminar on information extraction in the winter semester of 2013 and 14. Um, this is the first session today, and we will give a short introduction on the topic of information in extraction and what the focus in this seminar is. Um, then we will talk about the organis organization of this uh, seminar, how your talks should be structured, and finally we will assign the topics uh, you can talk about. The seminar is organized by Sabine, here in the front row, and myself. Um, but of course, Professor Hannah Bast will also attend your talks and ask questions. Um, okay, so let's start right uh, with the motivation on information extraction. And I want to show you a short demo of a search engine we developed at our chair. Some of you maybe already know it. It's called Broccoli, and you will see in a few minutes why it's called Broccoli. Um, so I will ask one query to the system for, uh, sorry, buildings that are tall, okay? So we'll type in building, and we see suggestions for words. Can you actually read it? Should I make it larger? Okay. Um, we'll see suggestions for words and for classes, and I'm going to select the classes, and we're ignoring the rest for right now. And I want it to occur with the word tallest, okay? Um, so the result of this query is a list of entities, um, which are instances of buildings, okay? So the Empire State Building is a building. Um, and now, why do we get this as a result? Because this instance occurs in the text with the word tallest, okay? The Empire State Building is a building, and in some sentence it occurs with the word tallest. This is why we get this in the result list, okay? Now, this seems to work pretty well. Um, Empire State Buildings is tall, the Burj Khalifa is tall, and again we see here that um, the entity somewhere in the text occurs with the word tallest. Okay, now let me show you another query for plants that have edible leaves. So again I'm going to, to select the class plant and use the words edible and leaves. And again we get a list of enti entities, and in this case these are plants. Um, and again, because they occur in the sentence um, with the word edible and leaves, so I'm looking for plants that have edible leaves where you can eat the leaves, okay? Um, now you see why it's called broccoli, because that's the first hit for this query. And it seems to be right, okay? The sentence says the edible portion of broccoli um, is something and some small leaves, okay? Again, for fenugreek, this seems to be okay. But if you look, look at the sentence here, for rhubarb, um, the red or green stalks of rhubarb are the edible portion, however, its leaves are toxic, okay? So this is quite the opposite of what we have been looking for. We were looking for plants that have edible leaves, now we find uh, some, some plant that has actually toxic leaves, okay? Now, what we, what, this is not really a semantic search unless we would like to have it, okay? So what we do instead is we perform some kind of information extraction. And now let me show you a system where we have used some kind of information extraction, and I'm going to... Uh, perform the exact same query for plant, again selecting the class that has have edible leaves. Okay, and again we get a list of, of plants. Um, but there's one small difference in this case, and you can see that not no longer the whole sentence is highlighted here, right? You only get a small excerpt of the sentence. And to see what's going on, I can look at uh, some debug information. If I look, click this button here, you see um, there has been some natural language pr processing going on in the background. There's a pass tree in this case, and we have extracted what we call context from this sentence, which are the basic facts of the sentence, okay? For example, the edible portion of broccoli is stem tissue, the edible portion of broccoli is flower buds, and so on. These are the basic facts in the sentence. And now we have restricted the search to, the, to these basic facts, and that is why rhubarb is no longer in the result list, okay? So this actually makes, makes the search better, okay? So so far for the motivation. Now let's get uh, back to the slides and um, talk a little bit of about what, what information extraction is according to lit literature. So if you, if you look up a definition, it, it usually says something like, something like automatic extraction of in information from unstructured sources, and these unstructured sources are typ typically just natural language, some sentence or some document, and you extract some information, and this information is then structured. So what are two, two examples? Well, one example typi typically given is named entity recognition. Um, again, let me show you uh, what this looks like in, 
in real life. So here's a, an, an online system does, that performs named entity recognition, and I can provide some, some unstructured text. That is some sentence in this case, some boring sentence. Albert Einstein was born in Ulm. And now what happens is the system will recognize where entities occur in this text. Okay, for example, Albert Einstein is a person. I will make this bigger so you can see it. Albert Einstein is a person, okay, th that has been found, and Ulm is a location. It's other information that has been found. So this is some, some uh, more or less easy information extraction, if you will. Um, another example that is typically, uh, or that is very central to information extraction is called relationship extraction. And um, again, let me show you a, a demo of this, of a prototype. I will use the same sentence. And I'm sorry, this is somehow the formatting storm. Can you read it? So it says, um, the subject of this is Albert Einstein. Um, the predicate is was born in, and the object is Ulm. So now we have somehow the entities and the relationships between these ent entities in the sentence, okay? And this may seem easy in this case, but of course it can get arbitrarily difficult. For example, I can insert some, uh, some relative clause into the sentence like uh, a scientist from Germany, and um, now there's two facts, okay, Albert Einstein was born in Ulm, and Albert Einstein is a scientist from Germany. So it's no longer that easy to just have these entities dire directly beneath it, each other with the relationship in between. Okay, so um, the result of the relationship is extraction is typically a triple, in which uh, subject, predicate, and object have been identified explicitly, okay? And um, what you have to know, typically for relationship extraction, you are given in advance a list of relationships to extract. For example, extract all relationships of born in, so person was born in location, or ex extract all relationships of type uh, married to person A, married to person B, and so on, okay? Now, another paradigm that is typically in information extraction is called open information extraction. And this is where they, the, the predicates are not given in advance. You're just supposed to extract all relationships that are between some entities in the text, okay? And relationship extraction and open information extraction will be the two main focuses of this seminar. Um, now, there's actually obviously a lot of uh, applications that, that need somehow uh, extracted information. And um, I'm just going to mention two. We already saw some search engine, semantic full text search, the Procoli system really needs information extraction. And there's obviously, for example, question answering. If you ask a system um, for a fact like, um, uh, where was Albert Einstein born? Then he will answer, Albert Einstein was born in Germany. This is also a place where you typically use information extraction a lot. Um, now in some more detail, um, information extraction is op often considered a subpart of natural language processing, um, and it makes heavy use of uh, machine learning in some cases. So this is why uh, in one part of the seminar we're going to have to understand the basic uh, natural language processing, the techniques that go on uh, behind the systems, and um, some introduction on machine learning. And the way we thought to handle this is that probably we will give a, sm a small introduction to machine learning if, if you want to have this. Um, and there will be two talks talking about the basic natural language processes or the techniques that go on. Um, and based on this understanding, we can then try to understand the approaches for relation extraction and open information extraction. And we will start with, with some earlier systems uh, from the year 2007 and 8. And you might not think that this is pretty old because it's five, six years ago. But if you think about it as a research field, um, it's really pretty new because compared to other areas like in algorithms where that started in the middle of the last century, this is really a new, a new and young field. And then we will also have talks about very recent systems that have only been uh, published a, a few months ago. Okay. Um, are there any questions to this part or else we will go to the organization of the seminar, and Sabine will talk about it.
Ich weg machen. Okay, so um, the seminar will be organized as follows. We will have one or two presentations per session. At the moment, there are many people here, so I think we have to have um, two talks per session at least sometimes. And um, for some topics, it will also make sense to group them together because they will be dependent on each other. Um, yeah, today we've seen already the introduction to the topic and we make the topic assignment in the end. And after today, we have 13 possible uh, dates where we can meet. Um, yeah, it depends on how many of you will really <laughs> um, want to have a topic at the end of this, and um, we will see how we will divide this. Maybe we won't need every date, we will see. Okay, so the first talk will be three weeks from now on. That means the people who um, will give this talk have to start really right now with gathering materials and preparing the talk. Um, yeah, so the schedule looks as follows. Uh, about three weeks before your presentation, you should really start preparing material, reading the paper we give you, and if there's a demo available or code available, you should have a look at that, see if you can uh, make the code run on your laptop computer or something else. And um, yeah, you should really make a plan what you want to talk about. You should really say, okay, this is interesting, this is not that relevant, and you should really write something down and give it some thought, because two weeks before your presentation, you should meet with us. We will tell you if you should meet with Emma or me for the specific topic. Um, if you have any questions, you should always send us an email and um, yeah, send it to both of us. So everybody knows what's going on, but you will get one of us that is assigned to your topic, whom you should meet then. And then you should present your plan to us. And um, this is not a point where you should yeah, <laughs> look first time at the paper and say, oh, well, maybe this or that. So you should really be prepared for that so we can really discuss things in this meeting. Um, yeah, and in the week that follows, you should work out all of the details and um, yeah, make really some um, studies with the software. If it's available, it will not be available for all of the topics, but for some of them. And you should prepare an outline of your presentation. And one week before your presentation, you should come again and more or less have everything final. So you should have slides. Of course, there might be some changes afterwards, but you should really have everything prepared. And we will talk about that. And in the week that follows, you should just yeah, incorporate our comments and finish everything. Okay, so what you really have to do is you have to collect interesting material. We will give you one initial paper about the system you will talk about, but it might refer to other papers. It might say, okay, well, this is based on that and that tool, and then it's your responsibility to look this up. Or if, if there's a demo available, you have to look around, you have to see what things you can use to make it, uh, to understand it on your own. Okay, so you should have a decent overview of the topic. That means if there are some methods named there, you should at least understand them to that depth that you can answer questions about them in relation to the paper you have. So if there's some machine learning topic, it doesn't mean that you have to understand everything about that and um, in every detail, but what's relevant for the application you should know. Okay, so the presentation, yeah, you should present it in an interesting manner. If there's a demo available, show it, show some examples, make things visual so your audience um, can connect to that. And you should give some insights, maybe even more words in the paper, so you should understand advantages and disadvantages. Papers normally focuses on advantages, so if you find anything there uh, about the disadvantages, it would be interesting. You should tell us what works well and there are problems, especially if there's code available. Or a demo, you should check if um, the code is efficient and um, how the quality is like, so uh, you should really test some queries and compare to the results that were given in the paper and see if this uh, fits what's written there. Okay, so your presentation uh, should be about 30 minutes and you should really try to keep it in that frame and then um, it will be followed by discussion. Of course, there will be questions from us and also from the audience. You can use slides in PowerPoint or PDF, whatever you prefer, and your talk will be recorded on camera just like every session. Okay, so um, we will help you in that sense that in the meetings we will give you some comments about what you already extracted 
and um, we will help you with the selection of material for your work. So if there's something mentioned and you do not know which paper to read or something like that, you can always come to us. And like I told you before, you can send us an email anytime. And yeah, we will give you some feedback, structure and contents of your slides. And yeah, well, but the, uh, you have to come to us. So we will not come to you and say, please show us that and that. And when we tell you something about that, you have to come to us and say, well, does this look OK? So it's your responsibility. Okay, and the evaluation will work as follows. You will get some anonymous feedback from the audience. That means after each talk, we will ask you to write down some positive and negative comments on the talk that you've just seen. And then we will collect all of this information and send it via email to the speaker. And um, the final grade you will get at the end of the seminar um, after every talk. And um, the grade consists of two parts. First one, of course, you have to understand the paper and the system. And um, equally important is the presentation, so make some nice slides and, yeah, really keep in the time frame. Okay, so um, now Emma will present the topics and you should think about <laughs> what you think might work for you. So first of all, um, how many of you are actually considering um, being assigned a topic today? because that depends on which topics I'm going to shortly talk about. I have 16 topics prepared, but I think we should at least cover about seven. And so how many can you please show? I'm not really sure what you're asking. Are you, are you saying willing to commit to the course and yeah. as opposed to not sure Yeah, as opposed to not sure, exactly. Because we have some basics to cover and um, I will not leave the basics open for somebody to tell me in two weeks or I decided otherwise. Okay. I, okay, okay, then um, I'll talk about um, the main important points um, in this backup list. Um, we will have to, as I said before, um, cover NLP basics in probably two talks, and in the first talk, this is going to be about shallow natural language processing, as we say, and we have um, part of speech tagging, and on-phrase chunking named entity recognition and entity linking. Um, and on the other hand, the second talk is going to be a more deep syntactic analysis, uh, like constituents or de dependency parsing, as you saw in the, in the demo, there's a complete tree, and semantic role labeling. And just again, to give you some intuition, for example, um, again, an online system So part of speech tagging and named entity recognition can be considered uh, more or less shallow NLP. Uh, shallow NLP is typically faster, um, but it doesn't give you as much information, okay? So this takes some time to uh, come up. So part of speech tagging assigns each, uh, each uh, word in the text um, its role. For example, Albert and Einstein are both nouns, was and born are verbs, and so on. Named entity recognition we saw before, Albert Einstein is a person, and, and Ulm is a location. And now below here we see a whole graph. It already looks more complicated, and now the browser crashed. Uh, um, but it gives you, it, it is more complex and it takes more time to compute, compute but it gives you more information, okay? So these are the both broad uh, uh, ideas behind this. Um, let's go back to the presentation. Um, and we don't give you, in this case, we, we don't give you a specific paper to read on because these are really standard tasks in natural language processing. There's always a Wikipedia page you can refer to, and from then on you can just present what the task is about and how is it usually solved. Okay. Um, then, as I said before, there's a relation extraction where you are given a list of uh, relations to extract, and we have uh, two systems for this. Um, but this one here is a really recent paper and it uses some uh, more or less complex mathemati mathematics. So some, maybe someone, someone who is not afraid of some maths uh, should have a look at this paper. Um, and in particular, all the systems I'm presenting now is uh, they, they usually have code with going with them. So you can download the system and start it up and see what the input and what the output looks like. Um, then we have some open information extraction that uses this shallow NLP that I said before. 
And this now may sound negative, but uh, actually, of, as I said before, shallow NLP is faster and it's more reliable. Um, so we have two systems. This is uh, Text Runner, which is the, really the first system that presented open information extraction. And then we have Reverb, which is um, its successor and uh, which, which does a bit more uh, complex uh, syntactic uh, constraints to fix some errors of the previous system. And for Reverb, again, there's code available which you can download and run. Um, then we have some uh, open information extraction systems that perform um, a more uh, based on a more deep NLP. And I'm just going to talk about two systems now, which is OLLI, which is online learning, the online language learning for information extraction, which is based on a dependency parse. And it's uh, actually only from, from last year. And um, Clause is very similar to this, and it's from this year. And again, improves on some, some shortcomings of the previous system in this case. And for both systems, again, there's code available. You can download it, you can run it. So then we have some, some systems um, that use information extraction or some tasks that are related to information extraction. Um, in particular, it would be nice if somebody wanted to talk about question answering and how information extraction is uh, um, used in, qu in question answering. We have selected a particular system, um, Lumba, here at the end. Or you can also talk about the track question answering track, which is um, um, Track stands for text retrieval conference, and uh, they perform tracks. That is, they, they give a list of tasks each year that systems are supposed to solve, and people can send in their systems, and they are evaluate, evaluated against it. And um, this talk would be about um, how this question answering track has evolved in the last year. It's already, already 10 years old now. What kind of questions are there, and so on and so on. OK, so these are now. Um, in total, I think seven seven topics. We would need somebody talking about natural language processing. Then, in any case, text run and reverb uh, would be great if somebody wanted to talk about and um, Oli and Clausy. Okay, then thank you.